Hello, members of the Faculty Association of Community and Technical Colleges. Um, I want to say thank you for inviting us to talk a little bit about the CTC Link project. My name is Andy Duckworth, and I'm the project manager at Tacoma Community College. And Dick Hall here, I'll let him introduce himself. Great, thanks, Andy. Good morning. My name is Dick Hall. I'm the CTC Link project manager. And uh, Andy and I have been keeping pretty busy over the last uh, year and a half or so and become best friends through the process. And uh, we appreciate the opportunity to answer your questions. And uh, both of us will most likely provide some additional information that uh, hopefully will be useful to you. So Andy, why don't you take that first question and we'll go from there. All right. Thanks, Dick. Um, so the first question that we had was around um, the six years of data that is going to be converted from legacy into into the uh, CTC Link system, and and what what how much I mean what how much data is really going to be pulled into the system? And so what what they mean by six years is they're talking about student data, and what I mean by that is that if you have a student that's been active at your college within the last six years, all of their data in the legacy environment will be migrated over to CTC Link. Uh, so let's say you had a student that, uh, that took classes in the 90s, but then within the last six years, they also enrolled and took a class at your institution. They will be picked up and all of their data will be migrated into CTC Link. So that's what's meant by the six years of data being pulled into Legacy. And then the, the second question um, is, will the State Board maintain any Legacy data other than transcripts on the HP? And Dick, you want to chat a little bit about that? Yes, um, our, our understanding is that we will continue to have access to the legacy database. Uh, I don't envision that all staff will necessarily uh, have access to that, but at least key pillar leads, pillar uh, subject matter experts, and that they would uh, have access to that and the data would be archived or at least maintained up to the point of the data conversion for our Go Live weekend. And um, they could go back and look at transcripts for staff that were aged back further than the six year period that Andy just described. And if there were, if there was data that needed to be transcribed from an original transcript that perhaps wasn't completed in the uh, PeopleSoft system, then at least they'll have access to that and that will carry over in that manner. So that's, uh, that's our understanding to date. I understand there's also planning to build an archive or repository for all transcripts from Legacy. Andy, I don't know if you can add to that or not, but I think those conversations are still going on. Yeah, and there's conversations around how that data will be accessed by students, and they're still they're still working through uh, through the the strategy there. And 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 I just wanted to also say that the historical data that will be um, available through Legacy uh, is going to be read only, uh, and it, and so you know people won't be able to write to that system. They're only going to be able to retrieve information from the system. Um, and then so I'll move on to question number three. Um, so it says, if answer to question number two is yes, will colleges have access to the legacy data maintained by the state board? And so, yeah, I, the, the answer to that question is yes. Um, and, and I think for at least a year beyond the project, that read-only data will be available in the, in the existing legacy system that we currently use today. It'll be just, a, like I said, a read-only format. But there, there have been conversations about moving all of that data to kind of modern modern platform and building some kind of a user interface for people to access the data uh, beyond that. Is that your understanding as well, Dick? Yeah, I would say that's correct, Andy. I don't think those details have been worked out yet, but yeah. uh, obviously they want to get all of the um, the Wave Colleges implemented, but that will be one of the uh, the goals prior to, or excuse me, post, uh, post implementation. So Andy, you want me to kick off the fourth question? Go for it. All right. Uh, question four was, what type of training did you receive, when did you receive it, and who provided it? Well, the first answer to that question was last spring, when the original Go Live date was in August of 2014. We had our training lead, Laura Radcliffe, at that time, uh, provided a um, uh, on-campus uh, faculty service center um, orientation. We did record that, and our intent was to share that out with all faculty for those that wanted to review that. Well, obviously, we've had delays in the project, and uh, frankly, our intent is to re-record that um, that um, recording. And uh, Spokane plans to do that. We'll create a new a new panoptic recording, most likely. And one of the uh, goals that we've had with all of our training is to record our training sessions, provide all of the powerpoints, any of the exercises and handout material that has been provided for each of the training sessions on a Canvas site. And that Canvas site is, is publicly accessible to all colleges across the state. And those links will be shared with faculty and staff. And as a matter of fact, I think, Andy, you might be providing some of those links uh, later on as part of this presentation. Yep. So 
So that, uh, that's the goal there for faculty. And uh, as it relates to students um, who will be asking questions about the system, as a matter of fact, I just spoke with Katie Anderson this morning just to clarify the uh, quick reference guides. A lot of the other reference material that will be developed for students is uh, near completion. Uh, that too will be uh, posted to a Canvas site. And uh, I think both Andy and ourselves, both colleges, will be probably producing some type of video material that we would likely uh, assign to a website or our student portals or whatever. So Andy, you might want to share some additional information there with that uh, you're planning at your college. Sure. Uh, one of the things, um, Dick mentioned some videos. Uh, one of the things that we're planning here pretty soon is uh, the activate your account system. It's a way for people to, to kind of activate their CTC link account, but also a place for them to reset passwords if they forget their password. Um, that, that system will soon uh, be in our user, ex user acceptance testing environment. And we have a media team here in Tacoma Community College, and we're going to have them run through that testing piece and record tutorials. So we'll have that available soon. And my, my hope is that we'll soon have some kind of test accounts in the system, maybe in our sandbox space where we can get our media guys in there and, and, and capture some videos around um, student activities in the system and also faculty and staff activities in the system. Um, and so Dick had kind of described the, the Canvas site and, and he mentioned I'll, about posting links. I'm going to post those uh, in this recording um, as well as uh, what I'm going to talk about next, which are the quick reference guides and the user productivity kit videos. Um, there's a lot of content that's available on the CTC Link training site. And I'll post a link um, in the video here for that. Um, and so I would highly recommend if, if you're interested in kind of seeing what's available and what the system might be able to do is check out, uh, check out the quick reference guides and the UPKs or user Pro productivity kit. We, we love acronyms in this project. Um, but check those out and, 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 and you give you a kind of a sense of, of how the system is going to function. And Dick, did you have any comments around uh, QRGs and UPKs or any other acronym? <laughs> well, we've got tons of those. <laughs> we could tie them up for about another 15 or 20 minutes just on acronyms, I'm sure. sure. Um, Andy, I thought it'd be worthwhile just mentioning, too, that uh, our public information office, uh, along with yours, I'm sure, is working closely with our student services and student achievement uh, staff. And we plan on holding uh, special student orientations. We've been printing banners and uh, you know uh, bookmarks, things of that nature. Obviously, we have to reprint some of those because the go-live date has been shifted once again. But uh, once we get the final date, uh, we'll continue uh, printing new materials. We plan to have uh, orientation sessions for our students. Uh, we'll have special um, demonstration areas. And uh, we're including our student ambassadors and government uh, staff as well to engage and, um, and facilitate the whole student orientation. So I think we've got a pretty good handle on that. And uh, frankly, um, from what I'm hearing from, from all sides, is that the students will probably have the least uh, amount of complication and effort in adapting to the new system. I think the major challenge is going to be for our student services staff and support staff. Faculty, I think that uh, you'll be quite pleased with the Faculty Service Center and uh, a lot of the functionality that you're going to gain through that as a replacement for the instructor briefcase. So um, that's about it there. I think we've answered the main questions. Andy, maybe I'll just just share a few other things that I had on my list and then I'll let you do the same. Does that sure. uh, work for you? Okay. Sounds good. Um, I think Andy did mention the training. Uh, both uh, colleges are heavily engaged in training now and uh, for all three pillars. I think we're about three quarters of the way through. Uh, we've got another week, week and a half of training. And then the um, state board staff and the two First Link colleges, Tacoma and Spokane, will be focusing on a, on a uh, replanning effort next week, uh, looking at all of the remaining activities, determining the critical path for the project plan. And uh, our goal is to establish a new go live date by the end of next week. I'm sure that announcement will be forthcoming from Mike Scroggins or Barbara Martin. Uh, in addition to that, um, Andy talked a little bit about the activate your account process. Uh, we're hoping to get that in the final test stage uh, in the next few weeks, and then um, and then determine how we're going to communicate that final process for our students and faculty and staff. Um, we talked about student reorientation. Uh, security access. One of the functions within security uh, of the CTC Link system is that when, in particular, when faculty are assigned in the personnel module, the HCM module as we call it, and that stands for Human Capital Management, <laughs> uh, 
in case you're curious about that acronym, um, by the mere fact that you'll be identified as faculty, you'll be given certain roles and permissions automatically, and that will give you access to the Faculty's Health Service Center and many of the other functions and features within that. And uh, other than that, uh, Andy and I are both uh, engaged in conversations with the State Board, and Sandy Main is the director for the support staff, and that will be the staff that will answer calls and uh, be there on the other end of the phone once we implement. Um, we have been, um, been discussing the need for on-site triage team for the first uh, anywhere from two to four weeks at Go Live. So we'll actually have State Board and Cyber staff here on site to assist us with that transition. But uh, we are working on documenting the support process and the phone numbers and the emails and how we'll interface between the State Board, our faculty and staff, and, uh, and our student uh, support to ensure that that's all in place. So that's all I had on my list, Andy. Uh, why don't you take her away from there? All right. Um, well, one of the things I just wanted to kind of mention is um, you know, Dick had, had kind of had briefly mentioned that uh, that people are really going to like this new system once it launches, and I would have to agree with that. And I think one of the greatest benefits is that we'll have uh, all, all these administrative functions in one application. I mean, that's really going to be a huge, huge benefit to folks. We don't have to, um, you know, people don't have to go to separate discrete applications to to get at the work that they need to do. So, um, you know, entering grades in the system accessing student rosters, all that kind of stuff will, will just be accessible to you through your faculty, um, faculty self-service tools um, and students alike that, you know, they'll have access to all of their, at TCC we call them e-services, they'll have access to all of those service, services in one, one spot. Um, and so it's really going to kind of streamline a lot of functionality and so we're pretty excited about that. Um, and we're also excited about really uh, getting to play with the system once, uh, you know, once it's fully, uh, fully built and and so one of the things that we're really looking forward to here in the near future is um, is the sandbox environment being updated with most current data and security roles so that we can get our staff in there and, and, and learning the system and playing with the system and figuring out business processes uh, and, and what what changes are going to be coming with the new system. So I would have to say that, that overall people are very excited about uh, what's coming and uh, and uh, a little bit of a sigh of relief that uh, that we're going to we're pushing out a little bit just because uh, there were, there's still some functionality that needs to be built and, and they want to see that stuff before we go live. So um, excitement around. I, wouldn't you agree, Dick? Well, I would. Um, needless to say, though, I think we have to recognize uh, our subject matter experts on both colleges. Uh, they've, they've just been uh, troopers. There's been an yeah. awful lot of work. Um, you know, there, there's, a, there's a benefit and there's a risk in being a pilot college. And uh, I think we paid the price, but they're really dedicated to seeing this happen. Uh, there's been some disappointments on the delays, but I think relief too, as Andy mentioned, because uh, there's just this project is so large, and it's one of the largest of its kind in the country. Um, I also uh, want to give compliments to the state board team and uh, and all their hard work. Uh, frankly, I think they they need more resources, um, but with that, I think the additional time will benefit them. We're close. We're excited. We want to see this happen. Uh, we hope to hear the new go live date in the uh, within the next week, and uh, wish us luck as we um, as we continue to be trailblazers for the rest of the, uh, the state. So thanks again yeah. for this opportunity, and uh, I'm signing off. All right, thanks everybody.